like to think we have a considerable level of control over the majority of our life, albeit some of us more so than others. And yet the reality is oftentimes this compulsion to try to control external circumstances, our external environment and other people comes from a place of fear and an inability to tolerate and to regulate your emotional experience because when we feel distress on the inside when we are unable to cope with our emotional reactions then naturally enough we have to find some way to soothe ourselves and we develop unhealthy and dysfunctional mechanisms to do so and one of these is trying to control other people trying to control all eventualities and unfortunately Unfortunately, this tends to exacerbate our anxiety levels because ultimately nothing out there is under our control. I mean, we can not control what other people think or what they do. We can't control what's going to happen tomorrow. We can't change the past. And yet we attach ourselves and hold on to this conviction that if we think about it often enough and if we try our best to control things, that somehow we're going to have a major influence on the outcome. Outcome. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. And I love the concept of radical acceptance. And this is basically just accepting that life is what it is, that, you know, things are going to play out the way that they're going to play out. And the more you try to control things, the more you feel completely dysregulated and distressed. Whereas when you focus on what it is that you can influence, which is your internal experience and your resulting actions, then you're less likely to feel anxious and you're more likely to feel autonomous and what this requires you to do is basically learn how to identify how to tolerate and how to regulate your emotional experience but also how to challenge some of your stories your constructs your self-limiting beliefs and narratives that we all have going on on an ongoing basis and that oftentimes we assume to be fact we assume that they are our reality and yet they are often the consequence of our conditioning and our past experiences. So it's about really getting to grips with the internal world as opposed to trying to look at all of the external stuff as a way of avoiding dealing with whatever it is that you're experiencing and the more you get to do this the more autonomous you're going to feel the more you're going to feel like you have a sense of agency in your own life because when you start identifying your true authentic experience you can then start to identify the values that you want to live your life by you can then uh, I suppose establish beliefs that serve you and that serve others because oftentimes the beliefs that we hold about the world and about ourselves are very harmful and very punitive particularly if we have experienced any sort of significant trauma or neglect in our past we internalize this idea of the world as being a very cruel untrustworthy place and consequently we see ourselves as inadequate we see ourselves as unlovable we may have massive insecurities and very low levels of self-worth we're always comparing ourselves to others and we always assume that other people are going to do bad things that we cannot trust the world that we cannot trust other people and this is a really scary world to be living in but it's about recognizing that so much of this world is a construct based on your previous experience and yes bad things are going to happen and yes you're going to meet people that are going to hurt you however the more you regulate yourself the more you work on developing self-worth, the more you work on your self-acceptance and self-awareness, the less likely you are to be completely suffocated by the actions of others because you will be too focused on acting in alignment with your values and in assessing what you need in any given situation and in finding ways to serve others because ultimately when we're in a place of fear, which is where most of us live our lives, we are always thinking about ourselves we're very egocentric we're always looking at circumstances and other people's actions and reflecting on how they impact on us as opposed to seeing ourselves as whole seeing ourselves in all our good bad sides and being able to find acceptance for that and then being able to find a way to 
tap into our potential, tap into our essence and use that essence to serve others and to contribute to the world. Because ultimately, if we're looking for fulfillment, if we're looking for a satisfactory life, we need to move beyond these convictions of unworthiness and unlovableness. And we need to understand that we have been put here for a reason that we can help other people or we can hate other people every single moment we have a choice. And again, I always talk to people about the importance of taking things one step at a time, one breath at a time, one decision at a time. As I said, we tend to want to solve our lives in totality as opposed to just acknowledging that the self-awareness journey, the acknowledgement of your internal experience is a skill that takes time. You cannot fast forward this experience. It's about just learning a little bit more about yourself each and every day so that you're not as reactive so that you're more able to slow down your responses and act according to the person that you want to be. Act lovingly, act in a way that's compassionate and understanding and that contributes to the greater good. If you would like to find out a little bit more about perhaps some of the ways that you try to control your external environment, if you would like to create a better understanding of self-awareness, then get in touch with me on my website. It's fundamentals.ie.